Welcome everyone to the second practical workshop in the Craft Skills for Garden Conservation Scheme. My name is Joachim Seiler and I'm head gardener here at Gunnebo House. This time we are here at Gunnebo, outside Gothenburg in Sweden. And uh, Gunnebo House is an 18th century garden with a formal garden surrounding the manor with reconstructed kitchen gardens and a small landscape garden. The theme for this workshop is lawn and meadow cultivation in historic gardens. We are going to hear about and practice traditional cultivation of lawns and meadows in this workshop and we will start with the use of the scythe. We're, we're starting maybe in the wrong end, but these are, um, in English, you would call them peening ponies. Uh, they're perhaps not historically accurate at all in, in the UK or, or in Scandinavia, actually. But uh, if you're going to peen, you need something to put the anvil on. And uh, you'd use a peening pony or, um, or just a big something like that. Just a piece of wood, a log, and a uh, stump peening stump and then uh, just a camping chair or something. Okay, so today uh, you won't be scything, uh, that's for tomorrow. Uh, today we're going to start with just a sort of important bit of uh, learning how to make the blade sharp because it's uh, it's essential to uh, to proper scything. You, you can't actually use any of the proper techniques that we will be teaching you unless the blade is sharp. But we're going to start with the peening, uh, and you're going to be peening uh, blades that you'll be using tomorrow, so <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> uh, when we peen, there are different uh, types of anvils, uh, and there you, you notice probably that there are maybe different heights of the of the ponies too. And this is something we can we can maybe find the, the right ones uh, later. And and if they're well, they're too high, we can we can put something under our feet because we want to use our, our legs as support, our knees. So if, if it's too short, it's fine because you can just lower your legs. If it's too tall, then you need something under your feet. Um, there are two traditional anvils that are more historically accurate, you could say. Uh, and that they seem to have coexisted in some countries, but I don't know historically which was the most common. Uh, this is the, called the narrow anvil and this we call the flat anvil. This is more common now in Eastern Europe and Central Europe. And this is more common uh, in like Austria, Switzerland, Germany uh, on the west side. This is a bit more difficult, which is why it's not even mounted on a pony. <laughs> What's this? Yes, really. and that's the more modern solution to make life even easier. Uh, we call it the peening jig because peening is the the act of, you know, hitting it, hitting the the blade here uh, to make it sharp. So, and a jig is of course a word for things that guide you to make to hold the right angle or make something in, in the right motion. You have two caps and uh, they have uh, different uh, angles. And if you put your blade on the, on the base here on the anvil and then you put a cap on and you hit it with a hammer, you create the shape that the, the cap has. So it's very, very, very convenient. <laughs> Because uh, on a freehand anvil, you of course can uh, you can hold it a bit wrong mm. in different different ways, and this uh, will create an effect on the edge that uh, you might not want. You make the edge go point upwards or downwards when you want it pointing just straight, for example. Or you can, you know, maybe not keep it at the very top of the anvil of, of the anvil and. Maybe a bit in, and you maybe you're suddenly you're you're hitting the blade somewhere where it doesn't need to be hit. Yeah, it doesn't need to be peened. Here you just hold the blade against the center post here, and you can't really go wrong. Uh, so yeah, I, I I recommend it for beginners 
but I would say this is actually not that hard. Uh, it's it's okay to learn this in a day too, so uh, don't feel frightened of this one. And there are different models. We have another model uh, here somewhere, but they work the same way. It's the, it's a narrow angle, yeah. <coughs> With a peening jig, it, sometimes it's good to use a heavier hammer because the the effect is less Im immediate. On, otherwise, you you need to just so, so there's uh, there are some heavier hammers and some lighter ones, but it's a matter of preference. They both both work. When you're peening, you uh, you just strike with a hammer in the same place the whole time and then you use your left hand to move the blade so that you're not hitting the same spot and you can also with the help of your legs move a little bit to the side and then make a new position and, and then keep moving and you want the strikes to sort of overlap okay so I'll just uh, I'm just gonna demonstrate a little bit just how, how I sit and do it the blades that we're going to be peening, uh, I don't think a lot of them need to be, you know, you don't need to pr make the edge longer so much. I think we're going to be focusing on making just the edge sharp. We're going to be working on, on the very edge and not, uh, so you won't need the yellow or silver caps, uh, I would say. Uh, you can start wherever you want. Some people start in the middle and go out out this way and then go out that way or you start in one end and then just do the whole length. Sometimes for me I feel like it's hard to, to strike with exactly the same force everywhere so sometimes I just go back a little bit and I feel and you don't need to, there's no right or wrong. I'm just gonna just do it somewhere where you can see the difference uh, before and after. <laughs> so. Uh, when you're uh, when you're used to doing the the very ends of the blade, you need to you need to be a bit agile with your legs here for balance, because it's too hard to hold it like this. Or you get a friend, or you can find something to. But this is uh, to me a very useful way to do it. In the same same way here, though. So I move up my leg there for balance. And this is a good time now to maybe put on these. This is, uh, we're gonna move a bit closer later to, uh, for me to de demonstrate this more clearly, but I think you might even, even be able to see it from a distance. Uh, what happens when you peen and you start to get close to a sharp edge that's thin enough to be sharp, is that it, it gets shinier. You get more like a mirror finish. So this is one of the things you, that you look for uh, when you're peening to know when is it ready, when do I stop peening. I would say this is getting there. I'm, I'm not sure if it's actually... Uh, I might want to do another pass here. Sometimes you have to do... it's not for one pass, you do two. It depends on how hard you strike. Another way to know if you're done is that you want it to be so thin that if you put your, put your nail against it and you press upward and you just move, move your finger like this, move your thumb, uh, you should actually see that the metal is bulging and following y where you're pressing. You can also, if you don't like to use your <laughs> hand, or you can you can put it against the edge of something uh, and then press down a little bit and then just do like this and, and you, you want to see the bulge following uh, following here. So, or, or just push and see that there's something it's buckling like this. So that's how thin it should be. And then these fingers are holding the blade. So uh, middle and ring finger are usually touching the anvil for me and then uh, uh, this one I forget what it's called and my thumb <laughs> they're touching uh, the blade, holding the blade in position. And then I strike with a lighter hammer usually.
And again, I look for this mirror, mirror finish. And that when I push the blade, it actually makes a, it bulges. Yeah, I push the edge with my thumb here, or with with the anvil. That's peening. <laughs> Yeah, but it looks a bit dangerous with the angle towards the leg. Oh, yeah, but...